Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, the Apostles of the Lord, and the great pillars of our Church. In this Mass, let us also pray for Pope Francis, the successor of Peter, that God may always protect him and preserve him in his holy church. Let us now be sorry for our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in, in what, what I have done, done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. 
Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, God in the, the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In, In the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, Grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put him in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side, and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to Peter, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord delivered me from my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, for lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord deliver me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and I will bring and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others, Elijah, still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood does not reveal this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock 
I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, Saints Peter and Paul, whose solemnity we celebrate today, are considered great apostles of Jesus. They are even called as the pillars of our Catholic Church. And we all know why. Peter is the leader of the apostles, the first among equals. And traditionally, we call Peter as the first pope of our church. And Paul, the great missionary to the Gentiles. He traveled to different places and cities. He wrote many letters in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus. No wonder why they are considered as important saints of our church, the pillars of our church. But as we extol Peter and Paul today, as we honor them this day, we also recognize how God has worked through them if Peter and Paul are great, it is only because God works through them. In fact, in our readings today, we are shown how Peter and Paul were rescued by the Lord. In our first reading today, the Lord rescues Peter from prison. Peter was put in prison and were even chained. And yet, the angel of the Lord came in order to rescue Peter. And Paul, from his own words, as we heard in our second reading today, tells us about his story the story of his life, how the, how the Lord rescued him from being a persecutor of Christians to being a proclaimer of the good news of Jesus. Peter and Paul, the great apostles and pillars of our church, were rescued by the Lord. And that is the truth of our life, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord always rescues us. Ang Panginoon ang sumasagip sa atin. In the course of the history of the church, we have seen how several times the church was threatened with destruction. There were many people, many kingdoms, many empires, many ideologies, many leaders who tried to destroy the church. Many attempted, but no one succeeded. The church exists until now because as Jesus promised in our gospel today, the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Simply put, God, Jesus is telling us, 
I will always rescue my church. Ang dami ng nagtangkang pabagsakin ang simbahan ni Jesus. Hindi lamang mula sa labas, kundi kahit na ang mga nasa loob ng simbahan. Santo Papa, mga obispo, mga pari, mga laiko na pilit sinisira din ang simbahan. Pero ang panganib ay manggaling man sa loob o sa labas ng simbahan, nananatiling matatag ang simbahan dahil ito'y simbahan ni Jesus. At lagi niyang sasagipin, lagi niyang ililigtas ang kanyang simbahan. The witness of Peter and Paul is a reminder to all of us that God rescues us always. And so let us run to God and ask for His help. Let us go to God and ask Him to rescue us. Maraming aspeto sa ating buhay ang kailangang sagipin at iligtas ng Panginoon. Panginoon lamang ang makagagawa niyan, walang sino mang iba. Sa mga dumarating na panganib ng kapahamakan at kasamaan, Manalangin tayo, sagipin at iligtas mo kami, Panginoon. Sa pamamayani ng kasinungalingan at panglalamang sa kapwa, sagipin at iligtas mo kami, Panginoon. Sa mga nakaambang delubyo at trahedya sa ating buhay, sagipin at iligtas mo kami, Panginoon. God rescues those who fear Him. The solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul is also traditionally Pope's Day. On this day, we also pray for the successor of the Apostle Peter in our times, Pope Francis. In this Mass, let us pray for Pope Francis. The past weeks, we have seen Pope Francis in a wheelchair because of a knee difficulty. We pray for his health. We pray for strength of spirit. We pray that God may, persevere, may preserve him in his holy church. Pope Francis, in all his speeches and talks, would always conclude by asking us to pray for him. Imagine the leader of our church begging for our prayers. Pope Francis does that because he understands that even him needs rescue from the Lord. May God rescue him from all dangers that might be threatening him. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, let us take consolation in the fact that as God rescued Peter and Paul, as God has always rescued the church, God is always ready to come to our rescue. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our intentions to the Father with that same faith of the Apostles Peter and Paul, with the faith of the fisherman on whom the church is built, and the faith of the teacher of so many nations. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, successor of St. Peter, may bear the keys of the kingdom with wisdom and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That missionaries in foreign lands may have the zeal which St. Paul had in bringing the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may love our faith and eagerly share it with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that those who are suffering on account of their faith may find strength in the blood shed by the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may be made worthy of the crown of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God and Father, hear the prayers of this community gathered in the faith of the Apostles and held by their intercession. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, Master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way, gather together the one family of Christ and revere together throughout the world. They share one martyr's crown. 
And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant francis our pope and jose our bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the catholic and apostolic faith remember lord your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our, of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of your blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as you were once pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with everlasting, with every, every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. 
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the Church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the Apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to our weekly Wednesday evening Healing Rosary for the World tonight at 9 o'clock on our Facebook page. Our host for this evening's Rosary is the Diocesan Shrine of St. John Paul II in Hermosa, Bataan. Let us once again implore the intercession of Our Lady for all of us, especially for our families and for the whole world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for he has made you steadfast in St. Peter's saving confession, and through it has set you on the solid rock of the Church's faith now and forever. Amen. And having instructed you by the tireless preaching of St. Paul, may God teach you constantly by his example to win brothers and sisters for Christ now and forever. Amen. So that by the keys of St. Peter and the words of St. Paul and by the support of their intercession, God may bring us happily to that homeland that Peter attained on a cross and Paul by the blade of a sword now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Maria, in Adam.